Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. Today we're diving into something that affects everyone's life, business cycles. Ever wonder why the economy sometimes booms and sometimes busts? Why we can have record-breaking employment one year and a recession the next? These aren't random events, they're part of a fascinating pattern that economists have been studying since the 1800s. Today, we're going to break down these economic roller coasters in a way that will help you understand what's happening in the economy right now and what might be coming next. Whether you're a student, an investor, or just someone trying to make smart financial decisions, understanding business cycles is absolutely crucial. So, let's dive in and demystify these economic ups and downs. Section 1, Definition While America's standard of living has increased dramatically over the past century, it hasn't been a smooth ride up. For instance, during the early 1930s, real GDP per capita actually fell for several years in a row. Since the early 19th century, the U.S. economy has been riding this economic roller coaster of ups and downs. These recurring fluctuations in economic activity, marked by alternating periods of expansion and contraction, are what we call business cycles. We track these cycles using real GDP, which is our best measure of overall economic activity. By observing changes in real GDP over time, we can identify the four distinct phases of a business cycle. Let's break them down step by step so you can see how the economy moves through these phases. Number 1. The Expansion Phase During this phase, things are looking up. Production is increasing, more people are getting jobs, and incomes are rising. It's like the economy is firing on all cylinders. Number 2. The Peak This is when the party ends, we reach what economists call a business cycle peak. It's the highest point before things start turning south. Number 3. The recession phase. After the peak, we enter the recession. Production falls, unemployment rises, and incomes decline. It's the economic winter, if you will. Number 4. The trough. This is the bottom of the cycle, but also where hope begins. After hitting the trough, the economy starts expanding again, beginning a new cycle. Section 2. Example. Let me show you something fascinating. Look at this chart showing the phases of the business cycle. See those ups and downs? That's our economy in action. Number 1. The left panel shows an idealized business cycle, with real GDP increasing smoothly in an expansion to a business cycle peak and then decreasing smoothly in a recession to a business cycle trough, which is followed by another expansion and another recession. Number 2. The right panel shows the somewhat messy reality of an actual business cycle during the period from 2006 to 2020. After an expansion that started in 2001, we hit a peak in December 2007, then plunged into what became known as the Great Recession, the worst downturn since the 1930s. But in June 2009, we hit bottom and bounced back into what would become the longest expansion in U.S. history, lasting over 10 years. Then came the unexpected, in February 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic pushed us into a brief recession that lasted just until April. Section 3, Who Calls the Shots? When it comes to identifying where we are in the business cycle, who gets to make the call? It turns out that determining whether the economy is in a recession isn't as straightforward as it might seem. Let's break it down step by step and look at the key players, the definitions they use, and how they decide the timing of these announcements. Number 1. The Decision Makers. Here's something that might surprise you, while the federal government tracks tons of economic data, they're not actually the ones who officially call recessions. That job belongs to a group called the Business Cycle Dating Committee at the National Bureau of Economic Research, or NBER for short. Think of them as the economy's referees, making the official calls from their headquarters in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Number 2. Definition of Recession Now, you might have heard in the news that a recession is two quarters of falling GDP, but that's actually an oversimplification. The NBER looks at the bigger picture. Their definition is more comprehensive, they're looking for a significant decline in activity spread across the economy, lasting more than a few months, showing up in things like industrial production, employment, income, and trade. Number 3. Timing of announcements. The NBER is usually pretty slow in making these announcements. For example, they didn't announce the December 2007 recession until November 2008, almost a year later. Section 4. Common Characteristics. Each business cycle is different. The lengths of the expansion and recession phases and the sectors of the economy that are most affected are rarely the same in any two cycles. But most business cycles share following characteristics. Number 1. End of expansion signs. 
at the end of an economic expansion, there are usually some clear signs that things are slowing down. Interest rates go up, wages rise faster than prices, and that puts pressure on company profits. On top of that, households and businesses often rack up a lot of debt during the good times to finance their spending. Eventually, all that debt starts to weigh on them, and they begin cutting back, which can set the stage for a downturn. Number 2. How Recessions Begin Recessions often kick off when businesses pull back on big purchases like machinery, equipment, or new factories, or when households stop spending on things like cars and furniture. When spending drops, companies see their sales shrink, so they cut production and start laying off workers. That creates a ripple effect, higher unemployment, lower incomes, and even less spending. Number 3. The recovery process. Eventually, though, things turn around. As the recession drags on, spending starts to stabilize, people pay down their debts, and lower interest rates make borrowing more attractive again. Households begin buying homes and durable goods, and businesses start investing in new equipment to prepare for the next boom. That's how the cycle typically resets. Section 5, Why This Matters Let's take a closer look at how business cycles matter for individuals, businesses, and policymakers. Number 1. For Individuals Understanding business cycles is crucial for individuals, recognizing where the economy stands in the cycle can help with personal financial decisions. For example, during an expansion, job opportunities might increase, and wages may rise, making it a good time to advance careers or make significant investments. On the other hand, during a recession, it's important to prepare for potential challenges like job losses or tighter credit conditions. Number 2. For businesses. For businesses, staying informed about business cycles can guide strategic planning. During expansions, companies might focus on growth, investing in new projects or hiring more workers. But as signs of a downturn emerge, it's wise to tighten budgets, manage debt carefully, and build financial resilience to weather slower periods. Number 3. For policymakers. For policymakers, understanding business cycles is key to maintaining economic stability. Governments and central banks use tools like fiscal policy and monetary policy to smooth out the extremes of cycles. For instance, during recessions, they might cut interest rates or increase public spending to stimulate growth. Conversely, during expansions, they may raise rates or reduce spending to prevent overheating and inflation. Section 6, Summary To recap, a business cycle is made up of four key phases, expansion, peak, recession, and trough. These cycles are tracked using real GDP and represent the rhythms of growth and contraction that have shaped economies for centuries. Understanding business cycles isn't just academic, it's highly practical. Recognizing where we are in the cycle helps individuals make smarter financial decisions, businesses plan more effectively, and policymakers design strategies to stabilize the economy. The better you understand these patterns, the better equipped you are to navigate life's economic ups and downs, and maybe even anticipate what's coming next. If you find this helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Got questions about business cycles? Drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.